In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
such things as are right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without you may be enabled by you to live according to your will, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our Old Testament reading for this eighth Sunday after Trinity is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Thus says the Lord of the hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, It shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his heart, his own heart, they say, No disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. I am a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God afar off. Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies, and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal? Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What is straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is Romans chapter from chapter 8. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. You do not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Alleluia verse.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now profess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn of the day.
I'd like to share with you the text uh, for this morning's worship is, uh, for the sermon is Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. When the first Christian missionaries came to England, Christian missionaries, they reached the northern kingdom of Northumberland. This was in the early 7th century. But before they could come into the country, they were stopped by King Ethelbert. He had had some problems with the Norwegians coming across with their variety and pantheon of gods. And so he stopped these Christian missionaries. He was not sure that he wanted them to preach a new doctrine to his people. So to decide the matter, he called a convocation of all of his lords and nobles. And they, made, made, uh, uh, they met in one of his great kingly halls. And as they deliberated his question, a swallow flew through the great hall, attracted by the light that was coming out of the top of the roof, underneath the roof, which was a hole in the wall in order for smoke to come out. And he came through, all the way through, and went out the other side of the great hall. So one of the nobles addressed the Lord, or the king. Sir, the soul of man is like that swallow. It comes out of the darkness into the light for a little, and then passes again into the darkness. If these strangers can tell us whence the soul of man cometh, and whither it goeth, then I vote to let them preach. Brothers and sisters in Christ, here at Trinity, these same encouragement, these same words of encouragement and truth, Paul sends to the congregation to Colossae. You have heard the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you since the day you heard and understood the grace of God in its truth. God's hand of grace, by the power of the Holy Spirit and holy baptism, made you his child, who like the swallow who flew through Ethelbert's great hall has seen a great light and a light in which you and I continue to fly today. God's children remain in the light of the gospel. Our prayer as Paul's is that every child of God be nurtured, exposed, strengthened every day in Jesus who is the living word of God. It is Jesus who has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Throughout this entire letter of Paul to the Colossian Christians and the saints of Trinity today, the encouragement is to stick to the salvation plan of Jesus. 
You know this plan. God's plan for our eternal journey to heaven. We are now in his hall of light, also called his kingdom of grace, in which we understand and know his leaning toward us with his grace, love, mercy, forgiveness. It is a simple plan. Because of sin, you and I were destined to eternal darkness. But because of the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross, all who believe in him will not die in darkness. Christ put a hole through death by his resurrection so that you and I have a shot at life. Christ is the divinely appointed Savior. He is God's plan, a total plan for the salvation of the whole world. It cannot be corrected, modified, or improved on. God's plan is so simple that by the power of the Holy Spirit, the smallest of children can receive it. It is so brilliant that the, the smartest person cannot understand it or comprehend it totally. God's plan is so grand and gracious that the greatest among us are humbled by it. His plan is the only plan that saves. Peter declares in Acts chapter 4, Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to to man by which we must be saved. For a society that tries to be inclusive, is the gospel exclusive? Yes. Our society leans toward compromises and everybody is his own person. Truth is irrelevant. Right and wrong is up to the individual decision based on how one feels for the day. Peter's stubborn statement and narrow focus on Jesus as the only Savior is today by our society unacceptable, closed-minded, and maybe even called bigoted. But it is the truth. Around the turn of the century, a young man asked a farmer for a job. When the farmer asked the young lad what qualified him for such a job, the youth said rather crisply, I can sleep when the wind blows. The farmer really didn't understand the answer, so he kind of scratched his head. He liked the boy anyway, so he hired him. Well, it was less than a month later, the farmer and his wife were jolted awake by a fierce thunderstorm. Jumping to the window, they did did a a quick checklist on the things that needed to be done for such a storm before it hit. Were the shutters of the farmhouse secured? Well, yeah. Were the implements in the shed? Oh, yeah. The barn doors are hatched and latched and locked? Yes. That was when the farmer understood what the words meant, I can sleep when the wind blows. The young man had done everything necessary to make the farm secure. Christ has done everything to make your life secure with our Creator Father. By winning for us forgiveness of sin, which would always defeat us and separate us from God. So in a similar way, people may ask us, why should I believe in God's plan of salvation only through Jesus Christ? 
we are able and qualified to say, you will be able to see, sleep when the wind blows. You see, death may come blustering and threatening at any time. And doesn't it? We're shocked. We're saddened. We're scared. But there's a hold in that storm called death. And it's called resurrection. That's where we can find peace in the middle of a loss of a spouse or a child a parent, a friend. Satan arrives with howling accusations of our past lifestyle and sins. If there's a hole in that. God said, I forgive you. And I forget that sin as far as the east is from the west. The world may hurl hurts, insults, and barbs with hurricane force, and we second-guess ourselves into guilt and depression. But those who have Jesus as Savior are able to be at peace, as Paul assures us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Your faith does not rest on the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And the power of God is his love for you. Be assured, my friends, our Savior does not leave us alone to fend for ourselves against these powerful enemies. He declares to his disciples before he ascended that he would always be with us, just as you and I are with each other this morning physically. The promise of his always being with us is fulfilled at this altar as he comes to be with us in real time. His body and blood, in, with, and under the bread and wine. Why? <laughs> For the forgiveness of sin, so that you and I can sleep when the wind howls. Fearing for his life, you may have heard this story from the early 70s. The man's name was Shoichi Yokoi. He was a trooper for the Japanese and for the Emperor of Japan. He hid in a cave on Guam since 1944 during World War II. For 28 years, he hid in darkness. He was afraid that he would be executed because he made it through the war without being killed for the emperor. He didn't meet his expectations. So he came only out at night. He lived on frogs, rats, snails, shrimp, nuts, and mangoes. He did know the war had ended because the Americans flew over and they threw all of these leaflets all over the island and he read it in his own language. But he stayed in that cave for all of those years until he was discovered by two hunters. They told him he didn't have to hide anymore. The war was over. He didn't have to worry about his life and his lack and abilities. He was free. They brought him back to civilization where he was given clean clothes, food, and a plane ride back home. The Apostle Paul says, we have been rescued from darkness and brought into the kingdom of light through the forgiveness of sins. Without God's plan, we and all of humanity are listed as spiritually dead and condemned and even enemies of God. 
Now, because of what God has done for us in Jesus, the war is over. And we can go home with Jesus and sleep when the wind blows. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the true faith until life everlasting. Amen. Continue our worship with the uh, prayers of the church. Let us rise. Storms in our lives arise, Father, and we fear. Faithful are, are your mercies every morning. Look upon us with mercy and renew us by your Holy Spirit. Keep safe our going out and our coming in, and let your blessing remain with us throughout this day and week. Preserve us in your righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, Look with favor upon your servants, Darren, Dean, Dorothy, Gage, Delbert, Beverly, Grace, Larry, David, Rudy, Pat, Alyssa, Wilfred, Denise, Raymond, and Chelsea, your servants. Assure them of your mercy, deliver them from the temptations of the evil one, and give them patience and comfort in this time of illness and injury. If it please you, restore them to health, or give them grace to accept this challenge with courage and hope through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you alone can establish lasting peace. Forgive our sins, we implore you, and deliver us from the hands of our enemies, that we, being strengthened by your defense, may be preserved from all danger and glorify you for the restoration of peace in our land through the merits of Jesus, your Son, our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Visit, O oh Lord, the home in which your people dwell, and keep all harm and danger far from them. Grant that we may dwell together in peace under the protection of your holy angels, sharing eternally in your blessings. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace, Lord, both from within and from outside our borders. Bless our law enforcement in battling crime and military in protecting us from our enemies so that we may live in peace. Lord, in your mercy. O Holy Spirit, in baptism you have connected us with Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, and the resurrection. We are yours for keeps. Make us now ready to receive the most holy body and blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of all our sins and grant us grateful hearts that we may give thanks to you. Lord, in your mercy. All these prayers and petitions we bring before you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated for the offering.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.